My name is Alice Harfield and I'm a professional artist. So a professional artist, that sounds absolutely amazing. Um, is that something that you always wanted to do when you were at school? You know, when you were thinking about your choices for a career, was that something that was always there? Um, I'm really lucky, yeah. When I was about five or six, all I wanted to do was paint pictures. Um, it, it's been a dream. Uh, my parents tried to scupper it <laughs> by saying, you can't make a living being an artist, you've got to get a proper job. So, um, um, yes, it's, it's been my dream. So, um, I'm one of these strange people that actually like school. So, um, I did O-levels and A-levels. I, sort of, I think I've got 11 GCSEs and four A-levels. And then um, I did a pre-degree course, so after A-levels, um, you have an option to do a one-year diploma, um, which is um, an art foundation course to do a de degree, um, and that's a really good course to do because it, it explores all different kinds of arts, one's painting, ceramics, woodwork, graphic design, computer-aided stuff, obviously back in the day when I was doing it in 1984. <laughs> there wasn't much of that, but um, my daughter, who's 17, is is about to do a foundation course. Um, so they still exist, um, and it's a really good, you know, um, a, a really good basis to go on and then do a degree, and you've kind of got a more, a, a better idea of what you want to do when you've done your foundation course. Having said that, so I wanted to do painting, fine art. Uh, my parents persuaded me, as I said before, that actually um, I can't make a living as an artist and I should get a proper job. So they steered me down the line of doing a degree in commercial interior design. So um, I went off to Leicester Poly, um, I think it's a university now, and did a three-year interior design course. So I um, learned about designing commercial premises like pubs and offices and shops and stuff. Um, and hated it. <laughs> but uh, I mean, the, the pretty stuff, choosing colours and carpets and wall coverings and stuff, is about 2% of, of the degree. The rest of it was working out where the lights, pictures are going to go and how many desks desk can you fit into a space. It was really boring. But I did it, um, I got a 2-1, um, and then I did a year placement at Courage. Um, it was a graduate placement. Courage is a brewery down this way. I don't know whether it's everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they offered these year placements to three graduates, and I got one in Bristol. So um, for a year, I designed pubs, which was a bit more exciting. You know, I quite like a drink. <laughs> <laughs> I could relate to the space. And then after that placement was finished, I worked um, for a London office design company that had a branch in Bristol. Uh, horrendously tedious, um, very male dominated, even though I had a degree and a year's experience. When it came to being made redundant, I was the first out. I was given all the crappy office jobs like organising the library or seeing the carpet racks and stuff. Um, it was just soul destroying. Oh. And then after that, after I got made redundant, so this was like 92, um, big recession, um, I worked freelance with a friend of mine um, doing many domestic interior design product, um, projects, um, which was okay, but it wasn't really what I wanted to do. Your heart wasn't in it. No, heart wasn't in it, no. I actually started painting as light relief, painting again. As, as like relief um, during my final project in my degree just to, to you know do something that gave me some joy <laughs> um, so uh, and I carried on painting while I was working at, at all those other jobs um, and just selling the odd one or two or putting up some paintings in a pub or a restaurant and you know having little sort of exhibitions like that then um, I worked in market school for four years in Bristol every weekend in the cold um, selling my paintings um, 
and then sadly my grandma died and, and she left me a bit of money I think it was about a thousand pounds and I set up a shop wow so, um, I had a shop in Bristol and it was called the silly fish shop <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we sold everything to do with fish so my prints and paintings and and other artists worked. About, I had about 30 different artists who, who did some amazing wall hangings and all yeah. Then I had one in Bath as well, so I ran two shops at the, at the same time. Um, and then I closed the last one in about 2000. The last one was in Bath. Um, I moved to Somerset and decided that I didn't want to do that anymore. And um, I just wanted to concentrate on my painting. So that's what I do. No, I haven't really been taught much about painting. Um, it's everything I've kind of like learned through trial and error. Um, but I think if you have a passion for something, and um, for me it was colour. Love colour. Colour just makes the world go round. Wearing colour makes you happy. Um, just just everything about colour is is what I'm about. And um, and so I developed. The, the style I've got um, through trial and error, basically. Um, yeah. So, would you say you like a fine wine? You've got better with age. <laughs> <laughs> I like to think so. <laughs> um, I still struggle, um, and and you'll continue to struggle throughout your career. I mean, um, sometimes I, I, like a writer, I I lack motivation to paint. Although I'm quite disciplined, sometimes I think, well, actually, I don't feel like painting today. Um, and so I'll do something else um, until that has passed, and then I'll get the brushes out. Yes, it, it's taken me 32 years, as I said, became a professional painter, to um, actually make some decent money, not have any debt and have some money in the bank. That's how long it's taken me. Obviously, I've made mistakes in the past and, you know, I've, I've gone down certain routes that maybe haven't worked. Um, but um, what you need to think about is um, you need to be disciplined. And so you need to be in the studio, whether you're painting or doing business work, social media, website, anything like that, you need to be disciplined for that end goal um, and luckily you know my dad was self-employed and, a, and, and a, a professional photographer so um, I got that from him so I, I'm in the studio at eight so if the kids are at school I'm in the studio at eight and I'll finish up half three quarter to four when I have to collect them and then that is a working day Monday to Friday I don't go off and have lunch with my friends or you know go and take a walk, you know, that you have to be disciplined. You have to make every hour count to work weekend. But I mean, since lockdown, I have pretty much worked most weekends um, only because I've been really busy packing orders and stuff. And, you know, the most important thing is to get those orders out as soon as possible. So um, your social life kind of goes by the wayside. But if you've got that passion and that end goal in your head, then you'll you'll make yourself do it. Try everything. Do everything. Um, be influenced by everyone. Um, you you really have to work at it. So, I, I mean, I've done shows in all sorts of places, from little village fairs, um, and to just get out there and, and meet your customers and find out what they want, um, and try and gear your work to you know what what you know you can sell to make a living yeah and don't give up I've, yeah. got, I've got a whole file of uh rejection letters from galleries and publishers art publishers and i keep those just to show myself how far i've come um because those rejection letters you take personally and you think oh well, i'm not good enough i can't do that just like when you come back from an art fair and you've not sold much and you've not done very well and Joe Bloggs next door is like his work's been selling like hotcakes um you just you you can't afford to take it personally you just have to get back on the horse and go again
Yeah. On that, would you say now um, you you get, would you say it's more word of mouth or do you still feel you have to do a lot of the marketing? And It's a, it's a continual thing. So um, I haven't just got to where I am just by fluke. I, I, I work, I, I, I'd say if, you, if you're going to be an artist, it's going to be 5% the work of what you're painting or, or whatever, and 95% your promotion. Um, and you really need to push that side of it because people are, are not going to know that you're an amazing painter if you spend all, your, all day, every day, just painting pictures. So you, yeah. really, you really have to be um, really proactive. And, um, you know, I, I'm of an age when I, I didn't really know about social media and all that, everything I had to learn because we weren't taught that at school. And that's the advantage our youngsters have got is that they're so computer savvy and, and social media savvy that they can they can do that with their eyes closed. Um, but you, you need to do it and you need to get your Google ratings up and you need for when somebody puts in, say, for my, my case, if they put in Glastonbury Festival painting, um, my name comes up first. But it's been 30 years to make that happen. Had, yeah, of hard work. Um, yeah. yeah. So well, thank you very much for your time today. If there's anything else, you, there's one thing you'd want to say to anybody thinking about this, what would that one piece of advice be? Believe in yourself. Fantastic. <laughs> thank you so much.